artikel 2 minit eh kejap kejap eh dan Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. First of all, I would like to thank our participants for joining our webinar this morning on the title of Renewable Energy Landscape Within Regulated Environment in Peninsula Malaysia. This webinar is broadcasted live on IEEE TES Malaysia YouTube and Facebook platform. This webinar is organized by IEEE Power and Energy Society Malaysia and co-organized by IEEE UITM Student Branch. Our speaker is Mr. Zamali bin Zamin, and he will be giving the talk on renewable energy landscape within regulated environment in Peninsula Malaysia. Before we start the talk, I would like to inform you that if you have any questions regarding the discussed topic, you can type your questions in the YouTube chat box. For the viewers from Facebook, you also need to uh, type your questions in the YouTube chat box. I will post the questions to the speaker afterwards. First of all, I would like to invite Dr. Ahmad Farid Abidin, committee member of the IEEE Power and Energy Society Malaysia, to introduce IEEE to all of you. Dr. Ahmad Abidin. Okay, thank you. Uh, minutes. <coughs> Windows okay, Can you share? Uh, can you uh, have a look the presentation? Yes Okay, okay thank you uh, Mrs. Uh, Atika and also uh, our uh, guest speaker uh, Mr. Zamali Okay, please allow me a few minutes to uh, share with the all the what um. what is that? I to the EPS and where we are going. minutes. I cannot. I have to uh, to open back the slides. So sorry. Okay. Oh, bless you, kids. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Can you have uh, have a look? This slide. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay, uh, IEEE is the world's uh, largest professional association advancing technology for humanity. Uh, we have about more than 400,000 uh, members worldwide, uh, cover with uh, 160 plus countries. And also, uh, we do have 123,000 uh, student members. And the IEEE also conduct almost 2,000 and The breast, uh, five millions, uh, two hundred, two thousand, more than one thousand three hundred active standards, and also forty nine technical societies, and we also engage with the societal activity, where uh, we advocate the public uh, policy engagements global humanitarian efforts, education and certification, and also ethics in technology. Uh, PES, in a way that is a second largest technical society in uh, IEEE, out of 37 other technical societies, which under the IEEE umbrella. 
and uh, how uh, by uh, being a membership can help you okay first uh, you can grow and maintain your technical expertise and the second one definitely in terms of networking uh, you can have the uh, connection with other uh, professionals uh, friends and also uh, contribute to the technical of power and energy save money on available uh, program and materials and by staying technically professional with PES, uh, you are able to join our online into shop and practice courses for in sources for in, in order to uh, improve our uh, technical aspects and many resources are eligible for the CEU and CEU PDH. And uh, under our resource center, uh, available uh, with the tutorial video, technical reports, journal articles, uh, cafe minas, conference slides, and many more. And looking to the coverage of the engagement under PES, okay, we can have a look that there is a 10 region where Malaysia is under region number 10, where we have 45 chapters with the more than 9,000 members. And this is uh, the list or the lineup of our leadership. So looking to the history of our leadership, we are already uh, 2000, uh, 27 years in Malaysia. So what we did is uh, we conduct the invited le lecture what for the outstanding engineer and technical activities five okay uh, so uh, please uh, uh, become a member for ITP EPES uh, one day and we also have a privilege for the PES student membership for one year uh, where we offer a free subscription to PES award winning power and energy magazine gain free access to PES resource center with hundreds of technical reports tutorials videos and presentation receive free membership in your local PES chapter receive discounts at dozens of PES sponsored or co-sponsored conferences and meeting in your area and around the world take advantage discounts on technical tutorials utilize PES Curious, which is a free service designed to specifically uh, specifically help undergrad and graduate engineer students connect with employers in power and engineers uh, energy industries. Okay, but the offer is only valid for individual for one year only, and to those who have never been a PES member before. Cannot move. Okay, uh, that's all I guess uh, for the introduction of the uh, PES. Over to you, uh, Akila. Uh, thank you, Dr. Okay, over to you, Atika. Thank you, Dr. Farid, for the introduction to IEEE. Now, it is the time for the main agenda. Let me introduce our speaker for this webinar. Mr. Zamali bin Zamin is an industry professional with more than 13 years experiences in the field of electricity supply. His experience mainly on electricity distribution and generation system including 9 years experience in energy regulatory field with Energy Commission Malaysia. Currently, he holds a position as Deputy Director in Electricity Licensing Unit in Energy Commission. The main function of this unit is processing and monitoring electricity license and the purview of Electricity Supply Act 1990, Act 447. This role covers the overall electricity licensing regime of conventional power plant, gas and coal, and generation for renewable energy power plant involving solar PV, biogas, biomass, and mini hydro. 
with the introduction just now, I would like to call Mr. Zamali bin Zamin to give talk on Renewable Energy Malaysia scenario. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Atika. And uh, Dr. Farid, uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar talk. Uh, I've been honored for sharing my uh, knowledge and experience uh, in the power sector. Uh, and also, uh, uh, thank you for uh, Power Energy Society, uh, IEEE Malaysia chapter for uh, having this uh, webinar for, uh, for all the members and I, I suppose uh, to those uh, from industrial and academic. So uh, first, I think let me share the slide. <clears throat> Uh, is it okay? Can you see the slide? Uh, no, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I can see it. All right. All right, I can see it. All right, okay. So, um, my topic for uh, today's uh, session, um, I will talk about uh, renewable energy landscape within the regulated environment in the case of Peninsula Malaysia. Uh, uh, I think uh, Mr. Tika have uh, shared my uh, experience and the good. Thank you for the introduction. So uh, my content uh, of uh, sharing today, uh, this is the outline for my presentation today. Uh, I will talk about a brief uh, introduction. Uh, who is the uh, what is uh, who is the Energy Commission? And the second uh, outline would be uh, how do we managing the energy trilemma uh, within the with uh, government energy policy and initiative. And the third uh, outline, I'll try to uh, discuss uh, RE policy at a glance uh, in the case of Peninsula Malaysia. And the key takeaway, uh, and then after that, uh, the Q&A session. Okay, let's go to the uh, Energy Commission uh, roles and function. Energy Commission, or uh, in Malay, we call it uh, Suruhanjaya Tenaga, established under the Energy Commission Act uh, 2001, and it's a regulatory agency for electricity supply and uh, pipe gas supply industries in Peninsula Malaysia and Sabah. So uh, we are fully operational on the 1st January 2002. Uh, before the formation of Energy Commission, uh, it is under the Department of Electricity and Gas Supply under Ministry of Energy. Uh, basically, uh, we are regulating uh, the power industry, uh, electricity supply and the pipe gas industry uh, in the term of these are the four main pillars. Uh, we are regulate the economic to promote economic in generation, transmission, distribution, uh, supply, electricity, and the reticulation of use of gas. And the technical regulation as well, uh, a safety regulation. And of course, uh, we are here to protect a consumer in the area of dispute. Uh, so this is much more uh, challenging uh, because we are handling with all the consumers in the power sector and as well as a gas electricity market. Okay, so these are the four uh, pillars uh, of uh, Energy Commission. So our main roles of Energy Commission, we uh, advise uh, Minister of Energy in all matters uh, concerning energy supply activities. Uh, of course, uh, the implementation and enforce of the Energy Supply Act uh, for the electricity market uh, under Electricity Supply Act 1990 and for the Gas Supply Act uh, to uh, govern the uh, gas uh, market for the uh, pipeline. Out of this, uh, 
uh, the whole roles and function, uh, I think I just highlight one of our uh, roles and function uh, to promote renewable energy and the conservation of non-renewable energy. So this will be the main uh, coverage for my presentation today other than uh, any uh, roles. Yeah. So if you look at that one uh, function, uh, promote competition and prevent misuse of monopoly power in electricity at the pipe gas supply industries. So I think that will be the big topic and we will not discuss that uh, more details in this presentation. Yeah. I think for those who are not really uh, uh, understand the world of a regulatory, so it is a symbiosis, I can say the combination of uh, three professional disciplines. Uh, we need to have a good uh, discipline in engineering, uh, legal of course, and as well as economic. So uh, within Malaysia, we have the Electricity Supply Act, uh, 1990 Act 447 for uh, regulate and govern govern the uh, power sector uh, especially in the uh, in the electricity uh, supply market so uh, having the engineering background i think um, as an engineer uh, in a uh, background i think uh, we are more optimistic yeah compared to legal i think uh, not not <laughs> Legal is more, much more a pessimistic kind of. So we are challenging to, you know, uh, in terms of a new policy or new new regulatory uh, framework. So these are the three disciplines that we need to uh, make it more harmonized uh, in terms of uh, regulating the industry. Yeah. Okay. So we go to the next uh, topic. Uh, how do managing uh, energy trilemma uh, with the government uh, energy policy and initiative? So we take a look, most of the uh, global uh, countries, uh, this is the basic uh, perspective in the way to uh, regulate any uh, market uh, in terms of, uh, with relate to the energy, yeah. So, uh, from a uh, definition by uh, from the world energy councils uh, energy security means uh, the management of uh, primary energy supply from domestic and external sources reliability of energy infrastructure ability and the ability to meet the current and the future demand so this will become our main uh, responsibility to ensure that the energy security to the whole nation to the malaysia uh, uh, of course in the case of uh, energy commission we are regulating the peninsula malaysia and sabah in sarawak they have their own uh, autonomy in terms of uh, uh, governing their uh, energy uh, supply next in this energy trilemma of course uh, this is the main uh, if you if you uh, engage with the consumer. These are the most important thing for all the consumer. I think uh, typically all over the world, uh, globally, the energy quality, energy equity uh, perspective, the accessibility and affordability of energy supply across the population. So when we talk about the regulatory uh, regulated uh, environment, these are the main uh, concern of the consumer as well as the regulators yeah so uh, the energy quality uh, equity is important because talking about cost about the tariff now yeah so these are the the the, the most uh, important lah, to all the consumer and, and as well so the third uh, uh, perspective in this energy trilemma is environmental sustainability so how do we how do the policy design or the regulatory framework in reduction of in the energy and the co2 intensity as well as uh, transition now uh, the industries uh, i think in the government now we are looking to the transition uh, from uh, the conventional uh, energy uh, generation to the renewable and the more uh, low carbon energy sources so this is what we we are discussing in the today uh, in the today uh, session 
So from the energy trademark, of course, uh, there are no uh, perfect world or the ideal world where we can have this uh, three uh, trilemma in the uh, uh, balance, you know. So it must be whatever the policy is, we have to take consideration of the cost, affordability. If you have the, uh, uh, to uh, encourage industry to go for environmental, we have to consider what is the impact to the consumer in terms of energy uh, equity. So if you have so much uh, renewable plan, so what will be happen to the energy security in terms of reliability, in terms of uh, demand? Yeah. Uh, so being the regulators and the government, we are always thinking the plan ahead probably uh, 20 years ahead, what will be the, the, the energy, how to secure the, uh, the energy for the public yeah, and the economy as well. So these are the energy dilemma uh, from the World Energy Council. So let, 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 let's take a look at uh, what is the, how do we, uh, especially the Energy Commission, uh, plan or strategize the, 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 from the perspective of energy security, of course we look from the the market itself, yeah. Uh, and uh, TMB uh, as the biggest uh, licensee or the biggest uh, state-owned uh, government-linked company in Peninsular Malaysia, yeah. Uh, previously, the model or uh, the operational uh, is a vertical integrated, where uh, they only have uh, IP, uh, the generation, uh, transmission, and distribution. I think in the early uh, 1990, uh, the government is open at the uh, generation uh, segment or the generation side to the IPPs, the independent power producer. So uh, when the government decided to make a reform in, in the industry supply, so that's where we, the creating of a grid system operator and the single buyer. So this is where we are now yeah so still the transmission and distribution is within uh, tmb tenaga national berhad as the uh, biggest uh, or the only uh, state owned uh, utilities uh, company and of course within tmb they are now focusing or they are in the process of uh, restructuring to having a differentiate business model in terms of uh, distribution license and uh, as well as the retail market. Yeah. So potential forward, we are looking into uh, the government uh, now in the study of uh, looking for more uh, deregulated kind of uh, model, bis business model. <clears throat> so, but uh, the potential forward, we, we haven't uh, there yet for Malaysia, especially in Peninsular Malaysia, because this one we're talking about deregulated the market where uh, more participants coming to the market. And uh, of course, uh, it's just like what we've seen in Australia, in the Europe, and of course in the UK. So when we do this, of course, we will always go back to the energy trilemma, whether uh, is this the best uh, model yeah, for Malaysia. And uh, in this case, uh, I would like to share uh, what we learned from the Japan. Yeah, the Japanese market. I think after the Fukushima incident, they have uh, do the uh, transformation for their market, and now they are uh, within um, five years or seven years. Now they are moved toward this uh, deregulated market in Japan. So, but in Malaysia, we are still at the uh, vertical integrated, but uh, of course within this vertical integrated, the, the Tenaga National Bank, their, their uh, strategize uh, their business model in the form of uh, the way forward in terms of uh, competition and more deregulated uh, market. Okay, so th these are the initiative in the a government when we when they uh, do the studies in terms of uh, Malaysia electricity supply uh, industry uh, have given to the my power my power is one of the uh, special purpose uh, agency to do the studies for this uh, 
moving forward uh, market. So this is would be like uh, the conceptual of what will be uh, the a framework of the market in the future in terms of uh, giving the best uh, service or the best uh, to the consumers. So if you look at here from the supply set, we have a fuel uh, generation. So generation now is a uh, open kind of uh, situation where we have the, all the IPPs and they have to uh, bid. Uh, and the, at the wholesale market, we have the grid system operator and the independent uh, single buyer. So these are the planning and the grid system operator to uh, bid the best uh, uh, generation to come up to to go into the to the grid and uh, at the retail market we don't have yet so we only have one uh, retail company which is uh, TMB is the retail company at the moment so moving forward probably in the the new reform uh, Malaysia electricity industry uh, probably we have, we have looked at this uh, retail market so just just uh, uh, share a little bit how Singapore do this uh, retail, uh, they took uh, about nine years to make sure that the retail market is really uh, matured enough for the consumer. So the process is quite uh, rigorous and quite long. Uh, I mean, uh, not really that easy because we want to give a best uh, price or the best uh, cost uh, to the consumer. Okay. But now, of course, the industry, they are talking about the prosumer and distributed uh, energy uh, resources, yeah, distributed generation. So uh, much, much more uh, exciting when we have this, the whole market is deregulated, then uh, we can see uh, many uh, initiatives from the industry, yeah, especially to provide the best uh, or the better service to the consumer. So that one... Uh, a quite uh, different uh, topic to discuss. Okay, let's see uh, what is the energy, in terms of energy security and the energy, these are the industry initiative uh, uh, embarked by the government. So uh, I think this, this is all uh, initiative uh, in terms of the segment of electricity market. In the transmission, okay, we have the grid code now. And we are now, uh, the government now uh, uh, negotiate with uh, the ASEAN countries whether we're going to have like uh, interconnection between uh, Laos, Thailand, Malaysia, uh, as well as Singapore. Yeah. So, of course, from the transmission uh, initiative, uh, the government uh, under Energy Commission, we are studying uh, whether the introduction of a grid network charge. That means if you have uh, merchant generators, you want to sell to any uh, off-taker within the grid, so you can do that with this uh, introduction of the network charge. Yeah. So from the generation side, of course, we have the NEDA. I will not uh, discuss uh, much about NEDA and the last scale solar. So I think this is the most uh, interesting uh, and the most uh, highlight uh, spot in the spotlight in the Malaysia uh, energy market at the moment. Yeah, so I will share a little bit about LSS uh, and the grid party access. Yeah, for the gas, uh, new form of PPA. So PPA, we are also need to uh, review the, the the existing PPA and what the PPA moving forward. Yeah, I think the open source force. So this is from the generation. And at the re distribution and retail, of course, we, uh, the government looking into the SIG, uh, the System Average uh, Interruption uh, Duration Index, uh, network charge as well, uh, at the distribution side, the power quality, at the distribution, GSL, MSL, the smart meters. Yeah. Smart meters now, I think the TMB, uh, the government has approved for TMB to install the smart meter in the, all over Malaysia within the regulated uh, business. And of course, at the consumer side, the consumer can now uh, install the solar at their, their house, their home, and of course, at the industry, commercial, they can install under the package of name. Yeah. So that are more or less uh, the, in, the, the industry initiative uh, by the government from the perspective of energy security and the environmental sustainability. So we go for the energy... <clears throat> 
energy cost energy equity we have a ibr here eh? ibr so what is ibr ibr is the mechanism to framework the setting so from the perspective of energy equity so we are looking from this uh, mechanism for tariff setting so we have done the first regulatory period from 2015 to 2017 so uh, now uh, so the purpose of this uh, IBR, we want to ensure that the efficiency of TMB uh, in specific to do uh, more towards the, we control the revenue of TMB, okay, as well how much the expense of TMB within this uh, incentive-based regulation mechanism. This is how we determine the tariff for the uh, TMB. Yeah. So just overview of a power plant capacity in Malaysia, yeah. So uh, we have uh, gas, coal, hydro, and solar in Peninsula Malaysia. Of course, in Sabah, we don't have coal. Okay? So most of the uh, generating fuel uh, come from uh, gas and uh, diesel. Uh, but we have, uh, having said that, we have some uh, RE, uh, biogas, and biomass. So uh, other than that, we also have this uh, National Energy Efficiency Plan. Uh, looking from the energy efficiency. So these are the key initiative of uh, energy e efficiency. Uh, the All the appliance, they need to have a five-star appliance, a minimum uh, uh, energy performance standard. We have the energy audit, energy management, uh, cogen and energy efficiency. So this is more or less or the how we uh, develop the policy within the uh, energy trilemma. So this is the main topic now, uh, the RPE policy at a glance in the case of Peninsula. So uh, I start with the Malaysia National Energy Policy, I think way back to 1974 when the first petroleum development and then uh, the government have uh, set the National Petroleum Policy, National Energy Policy in 1979, the National Depletion Policy and the Four Fuel Diversification Strategy in 1981. So in this uh, for for few uh, diversification, uh, the government uh, at this time uh, uh, construction of a gas plant and the coal plant uh, is uh, uh, within this uh, period of time uh, in terms of energy policy. So in 2001, in the Malaysia plan, uh, the fifth fuel is introduced where here we can see the renewable energy included in the national energy policy. So in the National Green Energy uh, Green Technology Policy launched by the Prime Minister in uh, 2009, there are four pillars of the Green Technology Policy, uh, Energy, Environment, Economic and the Social. So how of this uh, policy will uh, impact this Energy, Environment, Economic and Social? And the policy statement for this is Green Technology shall be driver to accelerate the national economy and promote sustainable uh, development. So the Malaysia National RE Policy, uh, uh, the statement is uh, enhancing the utilize, util, utilization of indigenous renewable energy resources to contribute towards national electricity supply security and sustainable uh, social economic development. Of course, the objective to increase the RE contribution in the national power generation mix to facilitate the growth of the RE industry to ensure reasonable uh, RE generation costs conserve an environment for future generation and enhance the awareness in the role. So we will see, uh, this is, uh, this statement has been uh, in the 2009, yeah, when the Malaysia uh, National Energy uh, launched by the Prime Minister. So I just skipped from 2009 uh, because during that time, uh, there is a one policy for the government, we call it a small renewable energy program. That program is within Energy Commission at the time, so we are exploring all the energy or, or the indigenous uh, RE uh, renewable energy sources uh, within that uh, SREP program. So in 2010, yeah, so I, I, I try to discuss uh, this, uh, this slide uh, between uh, what is happening between uh, 2010 and 2016. So in line with the National Renewable Energy Policy and the Action Plan, 
which uh, within the RE roadmap at that time, Malaysia had enforced the Renewable Energy Act 2011, Act 275. So this is like the, the catalyst to uh, promote, to, to achieve the objective of a renewable energy mix uh, within the uh, generation mix in Malaysia at that time. So, and at the same, uh, at the, the, uh, within the same, uh, the same year, uh, the Sustainable Energy Development Authority is formed under Act uh, 276, yeah? So this is where uh, SEDA have become one of the agency that uh, a statutory body to mandated under the SEDA Act to oversee the implementation and the management of RE, including the FIT mechanism. So one of the major component is to determine the life life of IT is the renewable energy fund. So the government have decided to uh, put a uh, levy, I can say, yeah, that is not a good uh, terminology to, to the consumer, but to spearhead this uh, renewable energy in Malaysia, so government have decided to uh, include a 1% uh, levy to the tariff, whoever use more than uh, 300 kilowatt hour at that time, yeah, so 1%, but now uh, uh, government has revised and become 1.6%. So all the consumer now we are contributed to the this uh, renewable energy fund through our electricity bill. One point six percent will go to this and will be managed by SEDA to promote and spearhead the renewable energy uh, to achieve the target. Yeah. So this is the function of SEDA, of course. Uh, same uh, advice in the minister, right? Promote the implementation uh, of national energy uh, policy objective of renewable energy. They also need to promote and stimulate that. So this is where, uh, how is the the comparison between Energy Commission and SEDA? Because uh, some some uh, when I meet with the industry, they are a bit confusing the function and the roles of Energy Commission and uh, SEDA. So I think after the, after this, uh, I hope all the participants understand now what is the role of Energy Commission and what's the role of SEDA. Yeah. So these are all the function uh, of uh, SEDA Malaysia and this is uh, where the feed-in tariff is uh, imposed or uh, introduced to the industry whoever want to install the renewable energy uh, plant uh, generation plant uh, so they can uh, subscribe or participate in this uh, feed-in tariff uh, system yeah so the system obliges the distribution licensees which is TMB, all right, to buy from feed-in approval uh, holder of FIA certificate, the electricity produced from the renewable uh, resources, the renewable energy, and set the feed tariff. So the government uh, with SEDA uh, setting the feed uh, FIT rate, and the distribution system will pay for renewable energy supplied to the electricity grid for a specific duration. So these are the mechanism or the instrument of a feed-in tariff by having all the RE plant uh, connected to the grid and uh, TMB will buy by the approval tariff uh, by the, 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 the government, the minister of course. Yeah. So what are the national uh, RE resources? Uh, at that point of time, they have uh, they, they studied uh, the potential in Malaysia. Uh, unfortunately, if you look from these uh, five resources, uh, wind is not, uh, I mean, during the study at this time, they are not see the potential of wind in Malaysia. Yeah? So uh, the first, uh, at, the, at this point, uh, they say that solar, the potential is 6.5 megawatt. Yeah. So we see that after uh, 10 years, what will happen. And the biomass still, uh, the potential is 1.3 megawatt and biogas uh, 410 megawatt. And of course the mini hydro, the, they see the potential of our resources is 490 megawatt. And the solid waste, uh, 360, and this is a bit challenging because uh, we, we are dealing with the other authority, the, the ministry of, uh, I mean, uh, the, pihak berkuasa tempatan eh? so for this uh, solid waste uh, issue 
So you just see what is the fit in tariff for solar. I'm just sharing uh, for solar and biogas uh, uh, at that time uh, during uh, between 2011 and 2016. The rate is uh, one ringgit and 23, the maximum they can uh, get, yeah? including the other bonuses for 21 years. So uh, this is quite a kind of a lucrative, uh, you know, business if you see it from today, yeah. So I will share what is the rate of LSS uh, after afterwards, yeah, uh, at the moment. So this is the rate of FIT at that time for solar. Yeah? Biogas still there, and I think they have uh, revised the rate. Uh, uh, you can check the set in SEDA uh, website what is the, the latest rate now, yeah. So of course, from the government front of view, we want to ensure that the renewable energy will cost will go to the grid parity. So what is the grid parity? So whatever the cost of the electricity fossil fuel will be the same when we uh, generate from a renewable energy. So this is what the, the government uh, vision at that time. So in 2020, we go for the grid parity for any of this uh, renewable energy uh, generation plant. So these are the, the uh, so-called uh, objective. Lah, eh? okay. So at that time, the government has set the rate at, uh, this is the target, yeah? by 2020, uh, we'll have like um, two gigawatt of RE mix in the uh, the grid yeah so that will be from the 2010 and the scenario uh, between 2010 and 2016 and in 2016 when the government uh, look into the market trend at the global trend especially in solar yeah so we can see a drastic uh, declining in terms of cost and the solar price plunge yeah in uh, 2016 and uh, I'm just sharing this report from IRENA. And from the IRENA, they say that the LCOE of uh, solar dropped by 40% by 2020. And this follow a drop in LCOE of utility scale of PV between 2010 and 2020. So very much a drastic uh decline in term of lcoe for solar yeah so you can uh, read uh, this uh, report from irena so that's why the government when uh we see that the global trend of solar is moving towards a declining of course so in 2016 the government have embarked these two policy uh, a large scale solar policy they targeted for one gigawatt for from 2017 to 2020 yeah. and of course at the much uh, behind the meter kind of uh, installation uh, government have introduced a net energy meeting to replace the FIT program so the FIT program is cease or discontinue uh, and the last FIT uh, quota is at uh, 2017 yeah so the target for quota for NEM at that time uh, between 2016 and 20 is 500 megawatt for all the NEM uh, policy. So this is how we look at the renewable energy programs in Malaysia. Yeah. So we have the solar rooftop for self-consumption uh, and net energy metering at the moment. Uh, no FIT for solar. And the last scale solar uh, will be uh, implemented by Energy Commission. And we still have a uh, fit in tariff uh, in terms of biogas, biomass, and a small hydro. Still continue uh, the mechanism or uh, the initiative of renewable energy for biogas, biomass, and a small hydro. So we look at the uh, mode of. Uh, later on, I will share a little bit about this uh, net energy metering uh, mode of purchase, we call it. Yeah? So I think everyone know now, uh, this is the basically what is the net energy metering is all about. So you use, you have the energy uh, from uh, solar. Uh, you use the energy first in the event of the excess of energy, then the utility will buy the excess energy from 
from you under the uh, ident- uh, a specific contract for uh, energy uh, energy to the to the grid yeah <coughs> and these are the principle of name uh, customer to install PV system for their own use and their energy export to, to the grid so these are the target uh, during uh, from 2016 up to 2020 yeah so at that time the cost of uh the tariff buy from tmb we set at the displaced cost so you can see now how much is the different from fit rate yeah so you see the fit rates uh, you can get up to one ringgit but now for the displaced cost uh, 31 to 20 cents uh, for low voltage of course at the displaced cost so this is how much uh, tariff or uh, tmb will buy in term of uh, uh, tariff uh, buy from tmb uh, under nem 1.0 eh? so when the ministry look at this uh, very low tech tech uh, taking rate or participant from the industry the government have decided to improvise the scheme and they call it one to one so one to one means how many you you you've been built by tmb so that is how much you you pay to uh, tmb to pay and buy from you yeah from the uh, participant or uh, uh, name <coughs> net energy meeting participant yeah so this make the industry become more uh, appetite and then the the participate more actively after uh, change the scheme of net energy monitoring and we achieving the target of 500 megawatt by year 2020 they just uh, finished the quota for name 2.0 but of course when we talk about one to one there is uh, a repercussion or the impact to the tariff actually so there is an element of cross subsidy for this one to one if you look at the you go back to the energy trilemma uh, uh, diagram you see when you have this uh, policy for energy uh, renewable energy or the green uh, energy if you look from the energy trilemma perspective there is some element of cross subsidy yeah so this one to one there's uh, there's such an element of cross subsidy from the tariff that's why we socialize the a uh, tariff so whoever have the money that install the solar they can gain more from the tariff so uh, that's why um, <clears throat> So I think this is taking rate. Uh, I mean, when the government revised, this is how the industry react to that. So many takers now at that point uh, in 2019. And of course, this is uh, the target set by the government uh, at that time, uh, 20%. Yeah. So these are the initiative. Uh, other than that, uh, the government also have a uh, another uh, incentive yeah so under malaysia investment development authority uh, the industry can get uh, green tax uh, green investment tax allowance yeah and the green income tax exemption so these are the most uh, uh, a good package for the industry when they participate in the name of policy yeah on top of that they can also uh, get uh, uh financing scheme offered uh, where the government subsidize the interest interest uh, from the bank for any uh, participant in this uh, green technology or to be specific uh, in the net energy meeting so this make the industry much much more uh, actively participate in the NAM or net energy meeting policy yeah uh, so let me see so one Okay, this is uh, <clears throat> when you participate in NEM, there are mode, uh, two mode of purchase where uh, you will have uh, the, the industry can outright purchase the solar uh, energy, a uh, solar uh, asset and become the asset. But there is another way for uh, purchase the solar under leasing uh, PPA, we call it. Yeah. So basically the investor will go uh, financing all the asset solar. So the consumer or the buyer only pay for the energy so you look at the behind the meter uh, they will install the solar uh, system and the rooftop then the meter uh, after the inverter then uh, the investor 
they will charge the consumer or uh, the buyers uh, within the power purchase agreement of the solar so uh, we uh, the government have regulate, regulate this uh, investor they need to register with seda with that the minimum uh, paid up capital for foreign company of 10 million and for the local company they need to have uh, 1 million at least for the paid up capital of the company yeah so this like uh, the the new way of uh, doing business uh, in terms of uh, power purchase agreement yeah? some countries they call it the corporate PPE so now when the NAM 2.0 uh, we see that uh, okay the government just uh, uh, announced the new net energy metering uh, policy NAM 3.0 so basically this NAM 3.0 is more focused to the domestic uh, consumer yeah because uh, during the NAM 2.0 we looked at uh, not much participant in the NAM 3.0 so uh, under uh, revision of the net energy metering uh, policy so you can see that the mechanism roll over there yeah uh, nam one to one is only for uh, only for 10 years yeah tempo offset yeah? sorry uh, this is uh, i just take it from the uh, uh, government uh, website this in the malay bahasa yeah? melayu so the tempo offset the 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 this name one to one is only effective for 10 years so we kept the one to one that's mean uh the tariff or under the tariff mechanism we can only uh, cross subsidize element only for 10 years yeah after 10 years is uh you need they need to change the mode of operation to the self-consumption so these are the net energy meeting people it's all about yeah all right, we go for the next uh, policy uh, starting in 2016. So I think this is most uh, uh, a bit controversial to us, uh, Energy Commission, yeah, uh, in terms of uh, doing this uh, policy because we are dealing with all this uh, big, uh, a big corporation and even the financial uh, institution, yeah. Uh, PPA uh, for the last case, solar, of course, this is uh, 21 years built, own and operate kind of uh, concession. Of course, we kept the foreign equity not more than 49%. So I think uh, this slide will show that uh, what is happening uh, in the LSS last case solar uh, policy. Uh, we start uh, embark this uh, policy in 2017 under LSS 1, uh, awarded uh, to a capacity of 370 megawatt. And out of that, the commission 353. LSS 2 2018, uh, we, uh, the government award uh, for 522 megawatt and at that moment the commission is 130. And the LSS 3 we have awarded uh, last year, so they are in construction now. Um, so total uh, capacity uh, in achieving the government uh, RE uh, energy mix uh, now uh, awarded at 1.6 gigawatt yeah, and the commission is uh, the the power plant that have been already commissioned is 734 uh, megawatt yeah so because uh, if you look from the uh, large scale solar uh, they're connected at the two uh, system and the power plant the solar plant uh, connected to the transmission network at the capacity of 578 and uh, at the distribution network uh, means uh, they're connected at 33 kb or 11 kb at 155 uh, megawatt uh, capacity Right, so these are the LSS by region. If you look at this, uh, Kedah is the highest um, uh, capacity uh, operation, uh, operate uh, of LSS. I think uh, second uh, go to uh, Perak now, yeah. Perak is the second highest state and the Pahang is the third highest state uh, have, having this uh, RE plan. So these are some of the pictures of the project, yeah. And this is uh, still fresh from the oven. Yeah? Uh, you can go to our website. Uh, the government have announced the uh, last case solar four result. Yeah, just uh, come out yesterday. So we have two package. Uh, one package is uh, from 10 megawatt to uh, 30 megawatt uh, with the total capacity of 323 uh, megawatt for 20 bidders. And the price range, you can see here, the price range is at one eight uh, 18 cent to 24 cent yeah compared to the previous uh fit rate so i think uh the 
the inspiration of the government at that time for the large or utility scale of uh, solar or RE yeah, at that time to uh, meet the grid parity. I think it's materialized now. Yeah. So this is a LS4, the price range between 18. If you look at the second package uh, for those plants, uh, 30 megawatt and 50 megawatt, the lowest now is 17 cents to 19 cents. So total of 500 megawatt to the 10 bidders uh, shortlisters. Yeah. So this is the scenario or the landscape that I'm going to uh, that uh, my my uh, my message to share today. Yeah. So from the RE generation, meet we can see uh, from the single buyer website. Yeah, this is like a forecast uh, done uh, by uh, single buyer. So the generation mix now currently uh, for solar RE. This one we're looking from the transmission connected uh, RE plant at two percent now. We still burn more coal, 64% coal and 31% gas, yeah, more or less. I think this at the point of uh, 31st of January, yeah. So probably when the more, uh, I think when the LSS is uh, completed, there will be additional uh, generation mix here. We can see probably solar will be 5%. So this one, this data is from the transmission or system operation point of view. But for the gener uh, the solar or any RE uh, generated power plant connected to distribution, the system looking at uh, maximum, uh, so the demand, uh, oh, so, no, sorry. how the demand uh, behavior. So more RE, so there will be less demand and we have to plan uh, much, much lower uh, supply to the grid. Yeah? So that's how we look at it. So of course the question is will the uh, system can accommodate for this so large uh, system so in 2018 uh, the energy commission with uh, conjunction with a uh, uh, single buyer we conduct this uh, study so how much we can have the re uh, variation yeah? the variable plan variable re plan that can be connected then not harm or um, make sure that stability of the grid system. So from this study, we found out that 30% uh, is the maximum at the capacity of 6.7 gigawatt. That's the most uh, uh, system uh, can accommodate for all this RE, variable RE plan. Uh, we, we are not including battery storage. Uh, yeah. So at the moment, uh, no, uh, the government still study whether to uh, include the battery storage because when we have a uh, discussion with the industry still the cost is the main factor that they cannot uh, produce uh, or cannot install the battery storage at the moment at the last scale in malaysia because uh, from energy commission and the system operation we are looking from the front meter kind of battery storage yeah so of course, I touch a little bit about the license since I'm the, the unit of giving the license. So all this uh, policy of this plan, they need to get a public generation license or the private generation uh, depend on the mode of operation of that power plant. So this is uh, in line with the license electricity supply act where the section nine saying that any, uh, if you want to work, operate or permit to be used any uh, operation installation plan, you need to get the license. Yeah. So we will impose the uh, terms and condition on top of that license. Yeah. So I just uh, sharing uh, what is happening uh, in, in Australia in terms of uh, RE mix. Yeah. At the moment, if you, uh, from my uh, discussion, you can see that the government for any uh, policy of RE, we put a capping of the maximum uh, capacity yeah for example for nam we put the capping at 500 megawatt for uh, large scale solar at uh, one or two gigawatt yeah probably uh, can be up to three gigawatt so this is what happened when you have uh, so much re in your generation mix there is one point this is this is the case of uh, south australia eh? just last year october where you can see all the re uh, plant uh install at the consumer side and even uh, they have uh, 
RE, uh, last, last scale uh, utility uh, RE, the demand have become zero. So this can be make the, the system unstable and uh, stability uh, issue with the, the grid. Yeah? So these are the, the news you can read it from the Australia energy market operator. They say that <clears throat> the domination is successful of integration of rooftop solar in South Australia for shadow and rebuilding of jurisdictional power system in solar according to this report. Yeah? So that means in South Australia, they have 288,000, 100,000 of rooftop system. Yeah, consists of 992 megawatt and the large scale solar of 313 megawatt. And combining all, all of this uh, capacity and they experience the call it a zero demand uh, scenario. So I think uh, from uh, Malaysia, that's why we have to regulate this uh, renewable energy to ensure the stability of the system. Yeah. So the key takeaway from me, yeah, I think that's 10 o'clock now. <clears throat> Just take, take away uh, from the energy trilemma perspective, uh, the energy commission, we will cover or we try to, we will uh, cover in terms of uh, energy security as well as energy equity under incentive-based uh, regulation uh, mechanism. <clears throat> and SEDA, of course, the formation of SEDA to spearhead the renewable energy, then they will cover more or less the environment stability. But of course, this is not, they say that SEDA will only focus on the RE, but they need to uh, work together and harmonize with the uh, energy security and equity as well. So the second key takeaway, of course, the fee in tariff still continue for other resources uh, that is uh, biogas, biomass, and mini hydro. And for solar PV, for the front meter, a large scale solar policy. Because we have a large scale for the front meter. That means uh, connected at the grid, uh, TMB uh, grid now. And behind meter, we have the policy of net energy metering and the self consumption policy, self co policy. So for those. Uh, premise, be it industrial, uh, commercial, or even now the government uh, push the domestic housing to install solar under this uh, two uh, policy. Yeah? And of course, the key takeaway, of course, there are a lot, a lot so more of opportunity for all the researchers. I, I understand much, uh, most of the participants uh, today, you are from the academician background uh, and then some uh, industrial uh, experience. Of course, the opportunity for riches to explore in uh, supporting RE agenda, uh, national RE agenda, because currently we don't have any policy for the energy storage yet. And of course, the electric vehicles, uh, and uh, now people talking about virtual power plant, microgrid, and even the peer to peer uh, being uh, uh, pushed by SEDA last time. Yeah? So we already have the sandbox. So these are the things that most, uh, uh, moving forward. Yeah, key takeaway. So last but not least, I think <clears throat> my last slide. Yeah. <clears throat> I think everybody know now what happened in 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 Texas yeah, in uh, last month. I think uh, just a few weeks ago, I repeatedly failed to protect its power grid and against extreme weather. So I just want to share this slide uh, to say that this one report by uh, Jeremy. Uh, Schwartz, uh, Kia Collier, and Vienna De Villa. I, I just read it from the Texas Tribune, I'm second. I just quote this from, from there. So I read it. Uh, expert and consumer advocates say that the challenge to the 2014 proposal by Luminan, that one of the company, another company, which hasn't been previously reported, is an example of the industries, industries outsized influence over the regulatory bodies that oversee them. Yeah, this is lesson learned. From the, the from the view or perspective of regulators, and according to Tim Mostad, the associate director, uh, too often power companies get exactly what they want out of the PUC. PUC it is Public Utilities Commission in in Texas, I suppose. Yeah, even well intentioned PUC staff uh, outgunned by the armies of the power company. This is quite a harsh uh, statement. <laughs> outgunned by the armies of power company lawyers, and they are experts. The set truth is that if power companies object to something, in this case simply providing information about the durability of certain equipment, their gas uh, pipeline, yeah, probably the isolation system technically, yeah, probably all of us read the report, yeah, they are extremely likely to get what they want. 
So this is quite harsh uh, statement there. Eh? Because Texas operates in its own grid. The state isn't subject to federal oversight by FERC. FERC is the Federal uh, Energy uh, Regulatory Commission uh, in Washington. Yeah, because Texas have their own uh, autonomy per se, uh, which investigate power authority but can't mandate any reform. So the federal government can do anything because they want is uh, isolate and they call it a deregulated market. So the intention of deregulated market is is good because uh, in the economic theory. The monopoly uh, model is not good in terms of uh, cost efficiency. You want to make it more uh, cost efficiency, uh, you go for the competition market. Yeah. So if, if you're from the economic theory, you have a monopoly business and oligopoly, and then of course the the best uh, cost to the consumer is the competition market or the, or the deregulated kind of market. So this is the situation in the deregulated uh, market. <clears throat> And uh, this is why the government need to uh, really uh, study what is the repercussion of the impact when we do the deregulated. But of course, uh, as I said, one of the energy commission to make sure that uh, nobody in, in Malaysia, uh, especially the big corporation, to you know uh, uh, manipulate uh, or you know. The, the 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 monopoly uh, business yeah so i think with that i just conclude my uh, presentation uh, back to you uh, miss atika thank you very much <clears throat> all right thank you mr zamadi for the interesting talk on behalf of <clears throat> organizing committee i would like to thank mr zamadi bin zamin for the very informative talk I believe all of us understand the main point from the talk. Now, I will proceed with the Q&A session. I will read the question from, uh, uh, from Yep Yi Ping. Has the GPFS 2.0 expired? Any new scheme introduced? Okay, Mr. Zamari. Okay. Um, last meeting with MGTC, they said that uh the last is 2020 uh i think the best to answer this is a uh, malaysia green tax uh climate change uh, uh, center lah. Uh, you, you you might want to uh check with, within their website whether the gtf s2.0 uh, continue or not yeah mgtc yeah please refer to mgtc all right okay, okay yeah. next question <clears throat> Okay, next next question is from Prof Hazim Mukhlis. Okay, the question is for NEM 3.0 scheme, after 10 years, does the power generated from PV can only be self-consumption, cannot sell to grid? <laughs> hmm. I think I know this guy. Prof Hazli, is it? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, to answer that, yes, because uh, when we uh, improvise the scheme NEM 2.0, we change it to one-to-one. -to -one. Uh, uh, basically, that one-to-one -one have uh, some element of cross-subsidy. Cross so, uh, we are not put, putting any uh, time, time uh, cut off, you know, date for that, uh, uh, the scheme. So, when we, st we study, uh, the economic department have done, done the study, uh, we think that the most uh, tariff can support this uh, name uh, one to one is only for 10 years. Yes, uh, after 10 years, you, uh, the industry, however, uh, install uh, name, they need to change the mode of operation probably at the inverters. They need to resetting back the inverter so that the, the supply cannot uh, uh, go to the TMB. Yes, the answer is yes. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Mr. Damani. Okay, next question is from Dr. Ali Alwali. Okay, firstly, thank you for this very informative lecture. I have three questions regarding your opinion. First one is from your experience, how to balance between consumer protection and overregulation? Okay. Uh, I think to answer this question, the regulation is uh, imposed to protect all parties. Yeah be it, uh, the the utilities company and uh, consumer as well i can share uh, okay i mean that's regulation is for yeah so when we 
uh, develop any uh, regulation uh, imposed to the industry. So that regulation is made to protect the consumer as well as the utility company. I think, for example, uh, one of the requirements of the regulation, yeah, the licensee regulation, for example, there must be, uh, we have imposed, uh, of course, all this while you need uh, to have a contract, yeah, electric supply contract. So within that contract, it's between consumer and 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 the uh, the utility company, yeah. So that is one uh, instrument of a regulation. The other instrument can we impose that, for example, uh, a guaranteed service level, yeah, guaranteed service level, meaning the utility utility company need to set their benchmarking in terms of service level to the consumer, yeah. For example, uh, if the guaranteed service level, they say that uh, they can uh, start. Uh, provide the meters, yeah. So that means the new housing or the new premise. They need the supply within three days, for example. Yeah, set that in the GSL. So that is how we regulate the utility company to the consumer. That is one instrument, uh, government uh, guaranteed service level or the minimum service level. So we already impose this uh, to uh, Tenaga National Berhad. So I think this GSL instrument uh, under any regulation in 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 the world. Uh, most of the utility company they will have this uh, guaranteed service level to to ensure that their service is up to the standard. Yeah, so this is one. Uh, I think hopefully this answer your question, <clears throat> Mr. Global Growing Success of Solar and Wind will definitely. That. <laughs> uh, I think this, this uh, we need to do more uh, due diligence in terms of. Uh, economic uh, study, especially for feed in tariff. Yeah. So as I said, uh, when we embark this uh, RE policy, uh, we have five resources, and the government uh, looking from the global trend, the global market now. The solar PV have declined tremendously. Declined. Yeah. So from the LCOE, even the Irina report saying that oh the the. LCOE is declined 73% for the utility scale. Just imagine. So that's the point when the government said we need to revise the policy of FIT for solar. Yeah. So I think uh, for solar at the moment, we uh, stick with these two policies, the last case solar and the net energy meeting. So for other uh, resources, for example, the biogas yeah, and the biomass, uh, as well as the mini hydro, we still uh, continue with the FIT. <coughs> Yeah, I hope that answers the question. What was the biggest source of success in approaching the <laughs> biggest source? I think that this will go back to the uh, technological. Yeah, we know that the solar technology is improved uh, every year. Uh, technology impact lah, for, for this uh, the gate parity. And how the financing uh, scheme or financing from the uh the bank yeah the financial institution so i think these are the two factor that can uh the biggest factor like because the biggest factor for uh successing in this approaching the a great priority within the last 10 years yeah. <clears throat> dr just rule the only very potent use yes consumers need to do a significant transformation Story system and change inverter type. Yes. How do we want to ensure the PV will not hide this fan? <laughs> uh, how do we ensure? I think uh, at the consumer side because that is behind the meter. Yeah, behind the meter is is your system. If the factory uh, or any house house a domestic house a commercial uh, premise industrial, that is your system. Okay, as far as regulatory is concerned, we uh, go for the license. Whoever have the license, so after 10 years, you need to reconfigure back your system. Okay, and uh, of course, whatever the terms and condition put in the license, you need to uh, oblige to that, to that uh, requirement under within the regulatory. <clears throat> And if you are not uh, under license, so uh, and even not under this uh, name, uh, probably uh, it's up to your how do you manage your 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 system, lah. 
So I think uh, that we answer the question. <coughs> so the actual network being paid. Can you go to the network maintenance? Uh, one to one. Uh, how is the actual network being paid? Okay. Uh, remember when I uh, share the the tariff setting mechanism? So all this uh, asset cable network installation. Oh, sorry, uh, cable network installation maintenance. The actual network being paid. Okay, we're talking about network. Eh? What what I, I'm understanding? I try to understand this question. The network is uh, looking from the TMB asset. So when the TMB asset we based on the incentive based uh, regulation or mechanism uh, because TMB have to declare the asset value and and, and whatnot and uh, this is where we come up with what is the revenue for TMB and how much the public need to be paid under this mechanism and that's where the the element of crop subsidize you know when they say we have a 500 megawatt Net energy meeting connected under one to one uh, scheme. So, according to Temi, they will lose their revenue. Once they lost the revenue, we will be claimed back uh, under the IBR. So, this is where the, the cross subsidized element, you know, being uh, within this one to one. So, I don't know whether I'm answering your question, but how the actual network being designed is, is that the under IBR uh, mechanism? The cable network installation maintenance, I think that one probably uh, under uh, ONM, ONM uh, operation and maintenance cost is within the, the project cost. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Zamani. Okay, next from Mr. Yusrizam, Muhammad Yusuf. Can, Can the SEFCO Sef energy go, energy go through, through NEDA, NEDA if there is a uh, I, I'm not touching the NEDA policy now, but I think uh, somebody is asking about NEDA. So what, what is NEDA? NEDA is a new enhanced dispatch arrangement. So that's mean uh, previously we have a long-term PPA, right? Uh, 21 years for the all the power plant IPPs. So the government want to, uh, not to say move away, but mitigate and explore the new scheme for buying electricity from generators yeah so that is where the idea of NEDA comes in so that's mean we are open to any merchant generators <clears throat> but of course at the system marginal price yeah i think you, uh, you can uh, check what is the system so when any merchant generators connected to the grid they don't have any ppas yeah the existing ppa lah. so that's why we need we need to uh, revisit and relook back uh, the 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 element or instrument of PPA. So NEDA is a part of a new uh, point of uh, PPA. Yeah? Okay. Can the safe energy go through NEDA? Uh, at the moment, uh, when we talk about safe co energy, uh, we refer to the safe consumption policy. And NEDA is a NEDA policy. Uh, I understand uh, now industry, they try to combine together, they call it a hybrid. So I have a solar. Uh, this energy uh, NEDA mostly mostly we are talking about uh, 20 or 30 megawatt uh, of solar installation so when you have uh, NEDA NEDA is open up for LSS at that time yeah because you want to uh, stimulate the NEDA uh, participant actually so that's why in the NEDA plus uh, last year uh, the government decided to open NEDA to RE plant to participate because before this we only consider uh, gas plant where anyone who have the cogen cogen system in the in the in the in the installation want to participate yes this is allowable but when we talk about a safe co for solar safe co for uh cogen yes i think we can uh, go I mean, we have look into that but for solar i think uh, we are not allowed at the moment if you want to go for safe consumption that's mean the whole solar energy will go to the existing load and still at the moment we are not allowed for that uh, energy uh, flow to the NEDA because the, we're talking about this uh, two different set of policy. Selco is for your own consumption and NEDA for the uh, merchant generators connected to the uh, grid. Yeah. So I hope that's uh, answer your question. All right, next How question is from Prof. Hazim oh, okay. How does Energy Commission <laughs> anticipate the impact of smart ah, grid okay. technology to the regulatory <laughs> of power industry? 
Mm, I think uh, Prof Azri, this is uh, quite a big topic. <laughs> I know, I think you, you are one of the uh, committee member in the Smart Grid uh, Committee. I think heading by, of course, Energy Commission is the chair of that uh, technical working group. Uh, yeah, to answer this question, uh, anticipate the impacts of Smart Grid. Okay. Uh, this is my point of view, uh, Prof. Hazli. Eh? Uh, I think uh, you can uh, get more details within the committee. But my point of view is uh, we go back to the energy trilemma. We always go back to the energy trilemma. When you talk about smart grid, we're talking about the reliability of the system. Yeah. What we have now, the indication is SID, right? The SID now is, uh, I think, TMB SID is up to the world standard, like I can say, yeah? because uh, 50, 50 minutes now. We have pushed this SID since 2000, uh, say five years back, and more, uh, much, much more initiative done by the TMB. And now the SID is 50%, uh, 50 minutes, yeah, 50 minutes. So if there is an issue in terms of the asset of TMB, they want to upgrade for whatever reason, they have to ensure that they are not come, uh, uh, need to look into consideration the energy equity side. So we need to understand the cost benefit analysis of this uh, this uh, smart grid kind of uh, implementation. But anyway, now, uh, having said that, even in Malaysia now, we are moving towards smart grid. I think the low hanging fruit now is the smart meters. I think smart meter is part of the smart grid. Yeah, if you're talking about the whole smart grid, of course, talking about demand response, uh, IOT and, and why not. So this is uh, for us, Energy Commission, if there is a gold plated to the grid and the public have to pay more for that, for that asset, uh, we need to, you know, uh, to do much, much more uh, uh, due diligence study and we have to be more prudent on that on the smart grid. Yeah. Uh, impact of the industry technology, I think within the technical group, uh, Prohoji can discuss much more detail on that. Yeah, thank you. Alright, next question is from Dr. Jastro. Why TMB or EC is not allowed the SAFCO scheme to inject okay. the surplus energy into the grid without <laughs> any incentive? It can increase uh, the percentage hmm. contribution of renewable energy. Is it due to system stability? Okay. <clears throat> SAFCO, like I said, uh, I think the repeat, repeating uh, repetition of the previous question. We have this uh, for RE, we have a last case solar. Okay, I think uh, it is uh, when we factor in the LSS4, it's more than two gigawatt now. Direct connected to the grid. Yeah, that is LSS. So if you want to achieve that 20% or 30% of uh, energy target, uh, RE target, we have last case solar as the biggest chunk of that uh, target under last case solar. And we have a net energy meeting to give the opportunity for the consumer to have this uh, solar system uh, connected. Yeah, these two, connected to the grid. When we talk about self-consumption, the policy is self-consumption. That means you have the solar, you connected, you want to use it by yourself. That is from the policy point of view. If you talk about, you want to inject to the surplus, how many surplus do you, are you talking about? I mean, let's say, uh, Let's, right now, we, we have one uh, industry coming. Uh, they want to install solar, uh, the cement industry, right? They're talking about installation about 75% uh, of their MD. Their MD currently at 30 plus megawatt. They want to install at 25 megawatt. So they say that they want the, the surplus connected to the grid. Okay, the surplus. So 25 megawatt, if you do the simulation, and most of the solar energy will go into your load. How much the surplus are uh, you think that can significantly export to the grid and can contribute to the RE uh, target? I think to answer your question, we are go for the work policy. If Selco want to the want want to connect the surplus energy, we're talking about how much the energy can uh, you know. Uh, get by the by the grid lah. because from the view now we are much push uh, the policy of lss yeah one of the major factor now they are the 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 spearhead now for re contribution to the grid because the whole 50 or 
thousand uh, one gigawatt is directly connected to the grid. We're not talking about Selco now. Selco is different set of uh, policy to ensure the saving to the to the premise to the company uh, to the factory. Yeah. So I think that that would be uh, I think that that will answer for that lah. <clears throat> All right, next question from Prabha Suba. What is the ST's plan towards free energy trading market and its regulation plans? It plans, apologies if this was already discussed earlier. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, for, uh, okay, the, the keyword here is uh, energy trading market. Energy trading market. Uh, what we have now, we have the wholesale uh, market. Uh, uh, framework like say yeah we have a single buyer uh, we have a uh, grid system operator so at the moment they are the energy trading market lah, if you if you if you uh, refer to this uh, question the keyword is energy trading market so if you want to uh, look at the Singapore where they have the trading there and even the Japan they have a special uh, so-called the, the the trading kind of uh, stock market for energy in Japan, so uh, I, I I think the 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 roadmap to be there I think quite quite uh, quite long way from Malaysia lah because uh, that one we are talking about uh, number one of uh, uh, transform or uh, reform the the electricity market from regulated to deregulated for the market uh, fully market uh, kind of system. Then only we can talk about energy trading. Yeah. At the moment we don't know. All right, next question is from yeah. uh, Shakira Abdullah. Any upcoming policy yes. to support the yes. deployment of battery energy storage system, BEFS, uh, in Malaysia? Okay, to, to, to answer that, uh, of course, I think the past five years, uh, all the uh, energy community are talking about this uh, battery storage can become a game changer <laughs> to, the, to the industry yeah, because we have uh, solar. I think battery storage in Europe, European uh, market and I think in California they are very actively uh, and had a robust policy for that uh, energy storage uh, but in Malaysia uh, Energy Commission uh, I think we are in the midst of uh, study for that uh, by the a different unit lah. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, how, how far is the, the, the progress now but we are study on that uh, but we are looking from the front meter kind of installation. That means the storage are connected direct to the grid. They're just like a merchant generators or probably under NEDA, we don't know. But the upcoming policy, yeah, we study from the front meter. At the behind the meter, behind the meter, uh, uh, we have to look at the front meter first. Then only we're talking about the behind the meter and which storage. Yep. Not regulated yet in Indonesia. Hmm. Okay, all right. I think that is the last question. Okay. There are a lot of questions from the audience, which means this topic is really interesting. I would like to thank Mr. Zamani bin Zamin for answering the questions from the participants. I hope all of you could support all of our upcoming events. Stay safe and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much and yeah, Walaikum Salam. Thank you, Mr. Zamali. Thank you, Mr. Zamali. Thank you all.